Hello, I'm Brad Zanders with the Subside Electronics Product Support Group, and today I want to talk to you about the proper calibration techniques. What's important to look for when you get on a job site anytime you're going to calibrate a TK series tracker to one of our subside beacons. Okay, so before we get started, I want to make sure you understand the proper setup once we get to the job site to, to calibrate the tracker to the beacon. Number one is you always want to make sure that the beacon is installed into the beacon housing. We know for sure that if you do not have the beacon in the housing and you calibrate a tracker to that beacon, it will definitely affect your depth estimates. So always ensure that the beacon is in the beacon housing before you start your calibration. The next thing you want to make sure is that your calibration area is set up at least 30 feet from any metal objects on the job site. So that's pickups on the job site, trailers, uh, vacs, or especially the drill. So make sure that you're away from any metal objects. Also, you want to make sure that you do not calibrate um, with the housing on the drill. So always make sure that the housing is removed from the drill as well. Something else you definitely want to be aware of is you do not want to calibrate over the top of any utilities that may be on the job site. So everything should be marked, so make sure you don't have the calibration set up over a power line. Uh, you want to do it in a nice, clean, grassy area if you can find one. Uh, don't do it over concrete that may have rebar inside of it. You want to make sure you're not around any kind of interference that could distort this 10-foot distance that we're going to calibrate to here. Okay, the next thing I want to explain briefly is the two methods of calibration that we have today when we're using a TK series tracker. The first one is what we call a connected calibration. That means simply that we are connected from the tracker to one of our configurable beacons via Bluetooth and we've actually set up that beacon in the tracker with the two frequencies we want to use downhole and also the power output of that beacon. So connected calibration, what's nice about that is the tracker will actually calibrate both frequencies for you during the calibration process, which is critical if you want to have access to both frequencies while you're drilling, ensuring that your depth estimates will be accurate. Okay, so the next process we calibrate is through what we call an unconnected calibration. An unconnected calibration is when you have a tracker to an, you're calibrating the tracker to a non-configurable beacon. So what happens is you have to calibrate each frequency individual or manually. Okay, now that we're set up here and ready to calibrate, let's measure out our proper distance for calibration, and that's 10 feet or 305 centimeters. So you want to take your tape and set it to the center of the housing. You're going to measure out your 10 foot or 305, and you want to measure to the center of the tracker or to the center of this antenna or pod. Another thing you want to definitely do is you want to always remove your tape. We know that a metal tape at times could interfere with your depth estimates, so be sure you always remove that. Now at this point I'm set up, I have my 10 foot distance here, I'm in my clean environment, and I'm ready to go into the tracker menu and start the calibration process. Okay, so now we're ready to calibrate. First of all, if we're going to do a connected calibration like I talked about earlier, you want to look for the Bluetooth icon that should be found in the bottom menu bar of the screen. That'll let you know that you're still connected via Bluetooth and you can do a connected calibration. Okay, so now if you're ready to calibrate, all you need to do is push the menu button on the tracker. You're going to scroll down to Beacon. Select beacon, then you're going to make sure calibrate depth is highlighted, then you're going to select that, and then you're going to hit the select key to start the calibration. Now once the tracker starts calibrating, you'll notice it's calibrating your, the first frequency. In this case, it's 12 kilohertz. You'll see that beacon's adjusting. Once that's finished, you'll see that it's going to start the calibration for 12K. When that's finished, then you'll see that it will switch to 29K in this case, and then it will adjust and then calibrate that frequency. Okay, now that our calibration is complete, the main thing I want to point out to you is when you're verifying your calibration above the ground here, is you want to stay within the calibration screen itself. 
on a TK series tractor, if you back out to the walkover screen and you're out to the side of the beacon and the housing here, your depth estimates are going to be off two and a half inches. So anytime you're verifying it, whether you're verifying it at a five foot or if you want to check it and verify it out at 15 foot, make sure you stay within that calibration screen. Uh, an easy way too also is if you'll put you some marks on the ground at 5 and 15, at this point it's easy for you to just bring your tracker in, place it on the 5 foot mark, verify your calibration there, then you can come back out and verify it at 15. Okay, so that completes the calibration video. Hopefully you've learned some over the last few minutes. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact your local dealership. They're closest to you. They can help and assist you with the calibration process. You're always welcome to call us at Subside Electronics Product Support Group. Thank you.